I'm back with another video. This time I've tried to scour the interwebs and collate everything that we know about Tiny Tina's Wonderlands into some bite-sized chunks. Roll for initiative, suckers! Now there are only a few things out there at the moment, so we don't really have the slightest idea of what to expect from this game. But if it's anything like the Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon's Keep DLC, yeah, you can take my money now. I've already pre-ordered this puppy. Shorty, you the best. You the you the best. That being said, there seems to be a lot we can take away from the gameplay trailer and the article so far. So we do have a good idea about how this game plays, and some of its really cool gameplay mechanics. For starters, Wonderlands isn't going to feature established characters. Instead, you get the ability to customize your own character, from their race and general appearance, right down to their personality and voice. And I'm pretty sure they've given us a fair idea of how these guys end up looking in the gameplay trailer itself. But with all these options, does that mean we're going to have infinite varieties and end up with skill trees similar to those you'd find in Path of Exile? I don't think so. Nah. Wonderlands will have six distinct character classes to choose from, each with their own unique skill tree and familiar abilities. But while you start off with a single primary class, later on you get the option to slot in a secondary class, essentially allowing you to mix and match those two classes and their individual skill trees to create a hybrid character. And you even get the option to respec your secondary class after you've beaten the main plot. With the multi-class system, it adds so many options and should allow for some seriously bizarre and powerful combinations. Like having the option to have siren powers while also gun zerking, essentially having the best of both worlds. In addition to that, we even get further character customization in the form of hero points to spend and classic D&D attributes. Your hero points are broken down into strength, dexterity, intelligence, wisdom, constitution, and attunement. And they are different to your normal standard skill points that you'll earn throughout gameplay which you'll spend in the more traditional skill trees. So hero points sound very similar to how the badass and guardian rank works. However, we can apparently obtain badass tokens from the word go. So maybe badass rank will have some other unique upgrades with multiple stages and buffs that can affect all of your characters. While hero points may be limited to each individual character class, allowing for greater specialization. However, with these changes, it seems luck has now been upgraded to a unique attribute that has been moved outside of hero stats and can be affected by completing in-game challenges. Meaning, in order to get better rarity of loot and upgrade your luck stat, the more in-game challenges you'll likely have to complete. And in terms of gameplay, all the things you'd expect to cross over from Borderlands 3 have done. We have the faster movement from Borderlands 3, as well as that game's slide, ground pound, and climbing mechanics. Even all the manufacturers are back, albeit with fancy new names. Following on from Borderlands, there'll still obviously be a major focus on procedurally generated loot, but there will also be a shift in focus to combining your gear for some cool combinations. Melee weapons have been upgraded and appear to have the ability to be thrown and then have them return to you like you're the God of Thunder. And the guns have also changed with the addition of crossbow and magic based barrels. So when you pull this all together, with the addition of area of effect spells that can launch enemies flying, or take out an enemy in one hit, and with the enhanced melee mechanics, including the ability to glide towards enemies for a fatal blow, this allows for some seriously kick-ass ways to take out the enemy. Or take on a boss. But then again, there are just times you want to take out the enemy with some powerful explosive rounds. EXPLOSIONS! THIS IS fucking AWESOME! Now obviously there's going to be some beautiful locales to visit in this game, as well as some terrifying places. I mean, you just know the belly of that whale has got to be somewhere we're headed, right? But a cool feature they've showcased here is that when traveling from location to location, we zoom out to a third person tabletop view, where you get to see yourself and your allies as little miniature bobbleheads. Now this feature, I'm guessing, will either be a replacement to or addition to a new fast travel system allowing you to move around the map from place to place, but doing it this way allows you the chance to find loot and have pop-up encounters along the way. This also means that additional side missions, events, or future DLCs can seamlessly slot it in as new areas and pathways to explore and discover. Anyway, if you're anything like me, this is just not enough. We need more. Here's hoping we get another nugget of info or another trailer drop sometime soon. Now, if you know something that I've missed, have any ideas, or just want to let me know your thoughts, let me know in the comment section down below. Please remember to give this video a like, and if you haven't already, subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss any future content. Yes!
All we ever set out to do was become monstrously famous with minimal effort, but...